Senator Paul Rosino tells me an office is going to be built here at OSBI. I think it's so important that we we don't forget that these are real people with real families, no matter who they are. Ida's law named after 29 year old Ida Beard of El Reno. Ida, a citizen of the Cheyenne and Arapaho tribes, went missing in 2015 and was never found. When you talk to Ida's family and I got to know her niece and how important she was and to them, she was their aunt. She was their family member. She was a daughter. She was a mother. And they want to know and they want to find out what happened to her. The author of the bipartisan bill, Ida's Law, explaining what's next after it was signed by Governor Sitt in April. Now I need to move it forward. Now we're trying to get the funding so so we can make it come to fruition where we can really find some, some of these family members and help these families. Um, and I don't use the word closure, but at least... Um, some sense of knowing what happened to their to their family member. So here's how Ida's law works. It directs the Oklahoma State Bureau of Investigation to coordinate with the Attorney General's office and Department of Justice to get federal funds in order to create a database. The OSBI office will be used to work with tribal, state, and federal authorities on missing persons and homicide cases, providing guidance to victims' families. When I started to really dig into this, it's staggering um, the ratio of missing uh, native indigenous women compared to other ethnicities. Today, Rosino says there are more than 220 missing indigenous persons in Oklahoma, 14 of which are from his own district. Realize that people who are missing, they're just citizens of Oklahoma and their families want them found or at least know what happened to them. Ida's law goes into effect November 1st. In Oklahoma City, Christine Stanwood, KOCO 5 News.